a bigger mess right now, the Raiders or the Broncos? That's Skip, a good question. Skip, I want to put some of this in, in context. If Bruce Irving and Khalil Mack were so upset that Ken Norton Jr. got fired, they could have played better and he'd kept his damn job. Good point. It's part of the reason why you have no interceptions. Ten games into the season, since 1950, no team has gone ten games without having an interception. Mm. They have 14 sacks fewest in the NFL. But, Skip, this started in the offseason for both. <laughs> the Oakland Raiders, they get uh, Derek Carr hurt, and Jack Del Rio fires Bill Musgrave as offensive coordinator. A year after winning the Super Bowl, going 9-7, and seven, all of a sudden Gary Kubiak, Mm, I'm going to step away. Mm. Now, here we are, fast forward. Offensive coordinator for Denver gets fired. Defensive coordinator for Oakland gets mm -hmm. fired. And this is where we are. But to make a long story short, the bigger mess is Denver mm. because they don't have a quarterback. Skip, we got 98 years of data. Anytime a quarterback is six foot seven or taller, he's trash. John Elway selected him twice. Yep. This is not four That's months. Point. This is not four months of data. This is not four years of data. Not even 40 years. 98 years of data. If your quarterback is six foot seven or taller, I think John forgot that he played football. Now the Nuggets might need one of those guys. <laughs> You're talking about Osweiler. Yeah, and Paxton, Osweiler and Paxton Lynch. Who's going to play. Now, the Nuggets might need one of those guys because Millsap hurt his wrist. So he, he one of those guys might be able to go fill in for him. Yep. Skip. If you're going to heap praise on John Elway, bringing in, getting Peyton Manning to come there, division title after division title, Super Bowl appearances, mm -hmm. go to two, win one, he got to take some blame. He selected those two quarterbacks. He selected Jake Butt, tight end in the second round, I he think, did. and has not played. Jeff Harriman has been a bust. Look at his offensive players he selected. Mm. They've been terrible. Now, and everybody's like, well, he got Von Miller. Mm. If you took any player in the draft in the first round and you did not reach for a quarterback, you struck it rich. Because Cam Newton was one, Von Miller was two, Darius was three, Pat Peterson was four, A.J. Green was five, Julio Jones was six. Oh, J.J. Watt was 11. Nate Soda was in that draft. Mm. Oh, Skip. Robert Quinn was in that draft. So, nope, Ryan Kerrigan. So, if you didn't reach for a quarterback, a la Christian Ponder, Minnesota, Jake Locker, Tennessee, Blaine Gabbert, Jacksonville, you struck it rich. Look at this. The body of work says what it is. Now, John Fox is gone. Gary Kubiak is gone. Vance Joseph inherited yep. a top five defense with two all-pro corners, an all-pro linebacker that will be in the MV is a defensive player of the year discussion every single year. And look what's happened. That's fact. Now, he wouldn't give Brock Osweiler 16 million. Because he didn't think it was good enough. Mm. But now, <laughs> mm. now, what I don't understand, you tried to trade for Colin Kaepernick just a year ago. He you did. wanted to take a $5 million pay cut. Mm -hmm. But Colin Kaepernick all of a sudden can't play anymore, but Brock Osweiler can. Mm. Now, think about this. The Cleveland Browns said, Brock Osweiler, we're going to give you $16 million to go play quarterback. You can play quarterback anywhere in the NFL. Mm. It just cannot be in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm. John Elway said, you know what? I think he might be okay for $775,000. Mm. Really? He is what he is. We're going to find out if pa Paxton Lynch can play. Mm. But the 98 years of data says that if your quarterback is six foot seven or taller, he's not going to be able to play in the NFL. That's what the numbers show. And at some point in time, we can throw, we can say it was John Fox. We can say it was John L. Uh, 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 Gary Kubiak. Mm -hmm. We can say it was Mike McCoy. But at some point in time, who doing the cooking? Somebody burning the food mm -hmm. and it smell bad and we keep blaming the chefs. Wow. I love and admire everything you just said. In fact, I think it was your greatest salvo ever on Undisputed. But I warn you, you, you might have just lost your parking pass and your sideline pass in Denver. No. No? No. I'm <laughs> good. Oh. Me and, jo and Joel is real good. And oh. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. So that's why you're out on that limb. Right no, now. no, no. I'm not going to lose anything, Skip. Okay. My job now is to tell it like it is. Okay, I agree with everything you just said, but back quickly to the Raiders. To me, the bigger short-term mess is the Raiders because I personally expected more of the Raiders than I did the Broncos. I didn't think the Broncos were going to make the playoffs anyway, but I did think we both thought the Raiders were going to be, I think, a wild-card yeah. team, right? Yeah, but you and I have never been impressed with their defense. No, never. But they do have Derek Carr, even though he's been hurt for part of this year, mm -hmm. and they are a car wreck. And back to Khalil Mack and Bruce Irvin. 
To me, if Jack Del Rio wants any semblance of credibility left as the head coach of this team, this is just me, you have to suspend both of those players for this game Sunday in Oakland against the arch rival Denver Broncos. Mm -hmm. Will he do it? I'm, I'm going to doubt it because they're teetering into such a uh, just a, an abject mess that yeah. that I I don't know if he can because he's just fighting for his job. Right now, Absolutely, right? yes. But this was abs out and out mutiny for them just to say, "Oh, you fired our coordinator. We don't go to practice." What? what really? Skip. Skip. You can't do that. How about this, Skip? Head coaches come and go. Defensive, offensive coordinators come and go. Players come and go. The one thing that can never go or should never leave is professionalism. Regardless who the coach is, regardless who the players are, you have a job. You're collecting a check. You must be professional. You must maintain that level of professionalism I, I, at all times. I got it. And I know Ken Norton Jr., and he's a really good guy. Yes. And I get that. And they loved him to a fault. And to your point, if you played a little better, he'd still have his job. Exactly. Okay. Now, back to the Denver Broncos. John Elway is getting exposed. And if you really look back at the big picture, remember, his deficiencies as a GM got camouflaged by number one, Tim Tebow, and number two, Peyton Manning. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Because yeah. he inherited Tim Tebow, who, by the way, the previous year, Denver went 4-12, and 12, but the last three games, Tebow started, right. and he won two out of three of those games. Right. So he inherits that guy, but he starts Kyle Orton, mm -hmm. and they go 1-4 in 2011, John's first year as the GM. Correct. And he says, God, I have no choice. i, I got to give Tebow a shot here. The, the fans want him. He'll fall in his face quickly at, their, at Miami the next week, and then I can get him out of there and get Orton back right. in there. And you know what happened. Tebow carries them to a division title and a playoff win, and it camouflaged what was starting to go wrong. Mm -hmm. And then right on schedule, Peyton Manning gets pushed out the back door in Indy, and he knocks on the door in Denver and says, I would like to play for the Broncos. Yeah. Really? Well, at that point, a lot of people thought he couldn't play at all. Right. But to John's credit, he's like, hey, love to have you. He didn't have anything to lose because he, did he, not. he realized he couldn't win it with Tebow. So what happened over the next four years? The Denver Broncos went 50 and 14 under Peyton Manning. Now he didn't play the whole time in the, right. the fourth year, but but in his four years as a Bronco, they went 50 and 14, which was the best record in the National Football League, better than New England's record yes. in those four years. Yes. They went to two Super Bowls. They obviously got blown out in the first one by right. Seattle, but they, with Peyton at quarterback, won John Elway a Super Bowl as GM. Correct. And and he sort of got thrust up, up on the throne as the best yeah. GM in football, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it was all camouflage because once he was gone, once Peyton was gone, all of a sudden it's Trevor Simeon, and you did go 9-7, and seven, but you missed the playoffs, and now, really, they're 3-7? and seven? And the defense now, starting with Aqib Tlaib, he's getting a little up there, yes. just a little up there. So the window, I'm not saying it's shut, but it's closing right. on the defense, and, right? And the thing is what Peyton was able to do, he could get you out of a bad play into a good play, get you a good play to a great play. At some point in time, what you need at the quarterback position, Skip, is competence. There's going to come a time in the game that he's going to need to make two or three throws. Either he makes them or he doesn't. Trevor Simeon, Simeon can't make those throws consistently. We've seen enough of Brock Osweiler. We know what he is. I agree. So now we need to see, they need to see what Paxton Lynch, what he is. But the data says for a six foot seven quarterback or it taller, yep. that the numbers I, are not going to be what you want them to be. I and agree. you're right, he is, he is an idol. He's an icon. John yeah. Elway is an icon in Denver. He is. But his selections have not been very good. Mm -mm. And instead of being like a Coach Belichick and moving on, the guy can't play, can't play. He's going to make it try to fit. But look, everybody sees it. Herman is, it was, was a bust at the tight end position. Jake Butt, we're going to find out. I mean, I'm real hesitant of taking a guy that's injured and shelving him and letting him play the next year. Nah, I, can, I need somebody that's going to help me now. Mm. And Kubiak wins the Super Bowl, goes 9-7. And all of a sudden, miraculously, you know, he don't have the stomach to coach anymore. Mm, interesting. As, as, and Mike McCoy is highly respected, and they just scapegoated him. As a matter of fact, look at Phillip Rivers. Mm -hmm. When you have that guy, it doesn't matter who the coach yep. is. It doesn't matter. Mm -mm. I don't care. Now, you could keep talking about all this. And Joe Woods might yeah. turn out to be a hell of a defensive coordinator and might make a great coach. Maybe. But he's not Wade Phillips. Nope. At some point, point in time, 
you got to stop trying to micromanage and save money. You got if you're trying to win, it takes money to make money. Good point. Spend that money. If you didn't want to sign Malik Jackson. You better sign Calais Campbell because, Skip, when the defense was at its absolute best, they had Wolf and Jackson up front, and they had uh, uh, DeMarcus Ware and Von Miller. They did. They collapsed the pocket, and you run outside, you either go into Ware or you go into Miller. They don't have that now. Nope. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed, or go watch a few segments from the newest show on FS1, First Things First, with Chris Carter and Nick Wright.